guess the first most obvious question, you've had an astonishing career, and like you say, so many belts, so much success. Um, but I think even amongst all of that, um, Royal Rumble this year was a, a special moment for you and for your fans. Can you talk a little bit about how that felt and, uh, and, and you know, where that ranks for you amongst uh, all of the, the great experiences you've had? It was uh, pretty amazing in the fact that we could pull all of that off and um, get it done. And it wasn't just a, uh, it was an awesome for me and it was awesome for, you know, the companies. It was just awesome for wrestling, honestly, because it had never been done well, it hasn't been done, I'd say, since the 90s, I think. But in today's wrestling landscape, it just hadn't been done, and certainly not by WWE. Um, and for them to not only acknowledge the championship, but I wore the championship out, and to acknowledge me as the Knockouts World Champion, which is cro that cross-promotion and stuff, is just not something that they do because they don't need to. Um, and so for them to do that, for me, I thought it was really, really special. Um, Obviously, the people reacted in Hardcore Country was a character that I always wanted to present to the WWE audience, but I just, you know, never did um, for one reason or another. And so to be able to show, I always thought that she would be really awesome in the WWE landscape. And so I finally got to showcase her in front of the WWE fans, and they obviously loved her. And it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing night. It was an emotional night. Um, it was good to be back after, you know, everything and, and kind of like it was it was awesome in the sense that like not only for the girls and to be there with the locker room and stuff like that but just kind of have that little um bit of love on the way out right so you've given fans like myself so many great memories um over the years what's been some of your top experiences in wrestling oh. history God, I've had so many. That's just it. Like, because I've been wrestling. I've been wrestling on TV since 2005, you know, in, in the public. And I've been wrestling way before that. And I shouldn't even say that because I debuted on um, TNA at the time, their television in 2001. So it's just been a long, a long time. And it's like pretty unheard of for a, a female. Um, obviously, my WrestleMania match against Trish, it will go down in my, my, my mind and my history because it just really set me up for the rest of my career and the way people kind of looked at me because she is and was the top girl at the time and, and she's still considered one of the greatest, the, you know, the golden girl um, of the business and, and definitely of WWE, but to align me with her straight away, it set me right in the kind of that women's championship circle. Um which a lot of girls have to work a long time to get to, or they just don't, you know? Um, so that match, that rivalry, uh, the ch when I won the championship over here against uh, Beth Phoenix, uh, because it was such a long story of like this, we were two polar opposites, you know? Um, I was certainly the underdog, but it was the first time the women's championship had changed hands overseas on television or not uh, ever. And so it was pretty cool to have that moment. And then that ended up being on the cover of that DVD that they sold exclusively over here, which I didn't even see until we came back for like the following tour and um, somebody brought it for me to sign. Um, that, uh, the cage match with Tara and Impact when we main event it, uh, the show. And that was just a great culmination to our story. And for she and I to come from WWE, then go to Impact at a time when the girls were being given less opportunities at WWE at the time because it was more like that Divas era and they're getting time taken away and shorter matches and all kinds of stuff um, to be able to go to Impact and be challenged on a different level because the Knockouts division was really thriving and kind of breaking down a lot of barriers. Um, yeah, so that was awesome. Um, obviously, the Royal Rumble moment is up there. Uh, and this whole last rodeo I'm on right now, like it's been, I've been able to challenge myself against different people and different matches that I may not have seen. And it's just a cool way to kind of um, whatever happens next. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm so grateful for my career uh, and what I'm doing right now and just to have like that power and control over everything that I'm doing and kind of I'm just having so much fun, which is it's cool. Obviously, looking to the future, not just for yourself, but for wrestling as a whole, what are your biggest hopes? You know, what, what, when, you, when you look to the future of wrestling, what, what, what would you like to see? God, there's so much. I mean, I still think, you know, I would love for, you know, you look at a lot of sports 
and they have their own networks. There's the MLB network. There's you know ESPN that has ESPN. They cover the soccer and they have their all that. Like it would be really cool. And I know we have it in an app form, but like a, a re- more wrestling um, centric programming in that sense where it covers wrestling from all over the world and maybe has like a panelist type of show and stuff like that because I think that there's a definitely an audience um, for it and you know what we do it's it's tough because we don't necessarily fall into sports but we don't necessarily fall into like theatrics and acting like we fall somewhere in the middle and it's just recently where we've been getting recognized as far as like ESPYs and stuff like that. But for a long time we weren't. And I go, our job, like wrestling is one of the hardest jobs in the world because you don't have to just be a premier athlete, but there are no second takes. Everything, your promos, your matches, it's one shot. You get one chance to get it right. And if you mess up, you mess up in front of a lot of people on national television in front of a live audience. So... That's a lot. I've done acting and I've done guest roles and stuff and I would get 10 takes to get the line right. You know what I mean? We would shoot the same thing, scene 10 different times, 15, 20 different times from 20 different angles. So you, there was room if you messed up, they were going to catch it on one of them. Whereas wrestling is not like that, you know? Um, and there's no off season. It's not like, Oh, we wrestle for three months or six months out of the year. And then we have six months off. It's 200 days, 250 every weekend. Every weekend from probably about Thursday to Monday, we're gone, um, depending. So um, I think that I wish that the amount of, like, love and respect, because we put so much into it, they understood that grind and, like, what it really, really is. Like, there's a true art to it, and that takes a true professional to be successful and, you know, have longevity in this business, so... Yeah, so over the last uh, year since you left WWE, I've seen on uh, NWA and with Impact more mm-hmm. recently. Um, where has been? What is there anything in, over the last twelve months that you're particularly proud of? With that, obviously, there's the the Knockouts Championship run, yeah, and the revitalising the Knockouts division mm-hmm. um, and such. But is, is there anything that you're particularly proud of? Uh, I'm really the, proud of Empower. Like, to be able to to put that show on, that was something that, I mean, that was, kind of, I didn't even know if I was going to come back and wrestle. That was my only focus was the women's show. Uh, and even, like, to how to build women's wrestling in the same vein um, that we look at men's wrestling, or and we have for the last, and I just felt like, you know, to be a catalyst and to start changing the dynamics in those boardrooms and those conversations, because it's always been, like, a male's vision of what a female's, um, you know, altercation might be and to have more women's voices in those importing meetings to kind of say like, well, that's actually, because our our shows are based a lot off of reality. Like we try to keep them reality based and like, what would someone really do? And I found that oftentimes it was, I know women in the sense of like, well, that's not really how we would handle it or that's not something that we would truly say. We would... Women are, can be feisty, like women are feisty. And um, so I think that to be able to add more of that and to just, the fact is that we have so many more women that have been there at this point that are now stepping into those roles, like Gail leading the knockouts division. And, um, you know, I know that there's, you know, female trainers down at NXT. And, and so I think that the, those doors are starting to open up where there's more women being invited into those kind of places and, and those creative kind of spaces to help the next generation. But, um, yeah, I was, I was very proud of it because it not only did it trend number one that night over UFC, which is unheard of, um, but there was a lot of love that came from the women of the industry and just the industry as a whole. Um, out of it and so yeah and then this last rodeo obviously the rumble I was very proud of Um, and I'm proud of the fact that I'm a you know been able to do all of this as a free agent this whole time and to really take my power back and have complete control over my career and to be home more for my son and I've probably been more present for my son I feel like in this last year and a half than I have been able to because I've been on the road the whole time. So obviously on the, the flip side, you mentioned um, 
it's a sport where, like you say, you only get one take, and sometimes things go wrong in dangerous ways, sometimes they go wrong in quite funny ways. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, looking back, if there's um, one thing that makes you laugh the most when you think about times things either went wrong or very nearly did, and you managed to just about hold oh, it together. Oh, God. <laughs> um, there's a ton. There's a ton. But I will say there was this one time, and it was, my, it was a triple threat match in France, in Paris. So when I said that the only time the knock out the women's championship, sorry, the WWE women's championship had ever changed hands on television or just a changed hands across from the United States was that Raw in England. Aside from that, it had changed hands one other time in France, and it was myself against Melina against, um, myself against Melina against Lisa Marie Victoria. And whatever happened and... Um, I ended up winning. Melina was the champion at the time, and I ended up beating her for the championship in the middle of this live event. There was no television. It was just a live event in Paris. Um, and we came back, and obviously that was, you know, it was not, like, supposed to go down that way. And uh, Ricky Steamboat was the agent, and he was losing his... He was like, oh, my God, how are we going to fix this? We need to fix this now. Like, but they recognized that title switch and that title run for me, even though it was probably about a solid 30 minutes, I think. It was like a solid, cause he's like freaking out, like, oh God, thinking like, oh, they're gonna kill me that this happened overseas and now we gotta fix it and how are we gonna fix it? Um, and we were all throwing ideas or like, we'll fix it tomorrow night in the next town. And he's like, no, <laughs> oh God. Um, so yeah. That was pretty interesting and fun, and we had to go back out, and we did something else, and then Melina rolled me up, and then it was, yeah, it's funny. It was pretty funny, but it was more funny because of Ricky Steamboat backstage was the funny bit. Like, we still have beaten ourselves up about the thing, but I yeah, can't take away from Steamboat's reaction. 30 minutes of champion is still 30 minutes it of champion. It is still <laughs> in the record books as one of my title reigns. I counted it. <laughs> I count. I may. I kept counting it until eventually they go like, "Okay, we're counting it too." Fine. I go. It's in the history books. It's there. You can't not count it. It's even more official now. <laughs> Absolutely official. Thank you. We. Oui. <laughs> <Me too. laughs>